guys, welcome back to another Different Faces Challenge. Today we're working on another Anne of Cleves. This is the sixth Anne of Cleves, and this is Elvie Hale from the episode featuring Anne of Cleves in the 1971 television series, The Six Wives of Henry VIII, which I have not seen. The images were really degraded that I couldn't find, so apologies on that. Uh, hopefully this is gonna be one of my last pre-recorded videos for my surgery time because I don't know how long it's gonna take me to recover. It shouldn't be that long, but I figured better safe than sorry, so I'm recording up to the 10th. And after that, it will be things not recorded weeks in advance because I missed the interaction. But anyways, she actually had a very difficult face for me to portray, mostly because like I said, the images were really degraded and the ones that weren't were clearly photoshopped, so it's hard to tell, like, skin tone, eye color, eye bags, just general things like that I really, really did struggle with. I actually ended up using pictures of the actress out of costume just because I couldn't, I couldn't find any. And like I, said, I don't know if this is a good portrayal. There were very, very few to pick from. I think there was eight total to pick from, so seven of them were gonna get chosen and she at least had an interesting face like I really liked her hooded eyes she had kind of a cool mouth that was really all I had to go on the last one I am interested yeah you, you'll see who I picked for the last one but yeah for this Anne of Cleves I did notice that they had her doing sorry that was my phone making noise because I'm a bad youtuber but yeah like I did notice they had her like smiling, giggling, kind of doing things like that, so I don't know if they did the comedic portrayal as well. Like, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it, I just, I don't like her being made out to be just like a funny character in history. Like, she honestly should be given a lot more credit for her intelligence and for, she was super giving and she just, she made it out. She should have a terrible biopic where she is wearing sunglasses and finger gunning like give it to her she had an interesting life like she went from one extreme kind of to another she wasn't allowed to do anything she had no control no independence so nothing nothing she did what her brother said and then by doing what her husband said she had wealth she had status no one could tell her what to do. As long as Henry was happy, she could do whatever she wanted. And I think that's great. I think for her that was ideal. The only thing she really couldn't do is like marry, which we don't really have any contemporary sources about what her opinion was on the matter. I know there's one where she kind of talks about how she was prettier than Catherine Howard, but like she doesn't state really anything. She's again, smart. She keeps her mouth shut, and she makes it out. That's why when I see like kind of fan fiction or alternative history where they're like, if Anne, or Anne really wasn't given a shot, but like if Catherine of Aragon had just gone with it, which she never would have, but if she had, like, she would have been fine. She would have been totally fine. Henry would have taken care of her. Mary would have been fine. Mary probably would have been married off. Like, she would have had a much happier life. She wouldn't have been so miserable and sick all the time because she wouldn't be stressed. Similarly, if Anne Boleyn was given that chance, I personally think she would have taken it with both hands at that point, but if she'd been given the chance, she would have been golden. Again, would not have been allowed to remarry, but she'd have been alive. She probably would have been wealthy. She would have been able to keep her titles and lands and probably would have been able to have Elizabeth with her. Yeah, it's it's interesting to think about. I recently saw an alternative, like what if, uh, what if kind of of history, where like, if all the wives' pregnancies were successful, but they, all of the babies born were daughters, which is entertaining to me because that, that seems like the fate that Henry deserved. Like, yeah, he had two daughters, but can you imagine if he had six daughters with Catherine of Aragon, then I think it was three with Anne, and then another daughter with Jane? First of all, Jane's 
history and the narrative would have been wildly changed. She would not have been the favorite. I stand by that. And by the choice that person made to, to make her not be the favorite either. Like, she was the favorite because she had a boy. That's it. But yeah, it followed all the different wives. It didn't give children to Anne of Cleves, but in this alternative history version, he at least tried. Which I don't think that he tried even remotely. Although it has made me think, like, from a modern perspective, if maybe he wouldn't be classed as, like, again, modern terms, but, like, as some sort of demisexual. Because if you think about it, all of his wives, especially, obviously, chosen wives, were women that he knew, that he had regular contact with. He never just, like, randomly picked someone. Anne of Cleves is the only one that he didn't know ahead of time and he was immediately like no ew gross get out so make it i think about it a little bit because he also didn't have a lot of mistresses and again his mistresses were women that he knew that he was around quite a bit like he, he even picked all his future wives from the ladies serving his wife like he was in contact with other women but those were probably the women that he saw the most it's fun to think about. Like, we, we cannot apply these terms to historical figures like, yeah, for sure, this is what they were. Because they would probably blink and stare at you if you said it. They would not identify that way themselves. But it's interesting to think about, like, if they were in a modern context, kind of how they would be. I don't know. It's just something that I thought about. And yeah. Especially for someone who gets such a reputation as a bit of a ladies' man, a bit of a player, like... I don't... I, I don't know. I personally have never really seen that. I think it was more he was a bit immature and everyone gave him what he wanted and he ran wild with that. But I don't think necessarily that means that he was just like the nicked canon of his times, which I don't know if you follow that news, but it's a topic that I'm weirdly fascinated by, because the man just keeps having kids. He just keeps having kids, and he also keeps refusing to explain or give any detail why all these different women have kids with him. Like, he's given nothing, and I support him completely. He did a brief commercial with Ryan Reynolds for Father's Day, and oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, he has said he probably has, like, a sex addiction, and he had went on a very, very, very brief celibacy journal, but... A journal, journey, whatever. But yeah, I'm very entertained by that news, and making that comparison to Henry VIII also sparks joy, so it's happening. Anyway, I didn't have a lot to say about L.B. Hale, so this is where I went instead. Um, I think I did a pretty good job. Her high forehead was actually kind of hard, but this hair really helped out. Because I didn't want to make her face like super duper 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 low. Because then when I do the breeding challenge, the kids are going to look weird as hell. So this hair actually really, it sealed the deal. I try to find a headpiece for her, but at the end, nothing's going over that hair. So I just nixed it. I gave her obnoxious jewelry instead. Because why not? Sometimes you just have to kind of concede that you've been defeated. Or what kind of dress I give her, but that's not important. Anyway, so we are almost done with this challenge, and the next up's gonna be Katherine Howard. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.